Howdy there, liberty-loving patriots. Slap on your 10-gallon hat and grab your freedom fries, because today we're breaking out from the iron grip of big tech faster than you can say supersize me, as I present to you this mighty fine model comparison. Now, I admit, I might have been watching a little bit too much of the boys in recent days, but I assure you, this year collection of freedom license loving models is here to declare independence from those greedy core pirates, just like our forefathers did on the 4th of July. I've cooked up a batch of images which are tastier than your mama's apple pie, so buckle up, cause we're going full on Boston Tea Party. Freedom, yeah! Um, I'm sure you'll be glad I can't keep that accent up for long, so instead, here is the setup I used to see how well each model does for any given prompt. I'm using Comfy UI, same seed and prompt to each model with four images each. The question then, which model does best? The models used here are Lumina Next SFT, Hunyuan version 1.1, yes, they've got a new one already, and Pixart Sigma XL2. If you've been wondering which model to use, now is your chance to see for yourself. What does best even mean though? Well, for any given prompt, how well did the model do in terms of prompt adherence, style and content? For example, if we ask for a painting and it looks like a photo, then it didn't follow the prompt style. All easy enough, so on to the prompting. This first prompt is from my previous video, and I used it then to highlight the extra bold colour issue with Han Yuan. Hopefully that should be fixed now with the version 1.1 model, and of course Lumina we have yet to see. Here are the outputs then with Lumina shown first in the blue border. Han Yuan next in black, and underneath in purple is Pixart Sigma. As you can see, most of the models there have done quite well on the paper cut style, can zoom in on each. So there is the first one, Lumina, and that is Hun Yuan. And then finally, we have Pixar Sigma. Just a quick overview there. So which one do you think is best? Prompt number two is also from my previous video where I try to get that rather tricky charcoal art style. Hopefully we should have a face which is peering in through the window. And last time Pixart was the clear winner as only it could properly do the style. Here are the outputs then, Lumina looking quite good, Han Yuan, Pixar, I think they've all done very well. We can have a little zoom in there. So there is Lumina, and the next one, Han Yuan, and finally Pixar. Up to you, of course, which one of those looks the best. It's English text time with prompt number three. We kind of know two of them are a bit pants at text, but how well will Lumina do? And as you can see, the answer is not much better. So the rodents, I think, have come out quite well. This is meant to be a photo of a rodent druid holding a sign which reads, no cats. Uh, we've got a no down there, so that's fairly close. But overall, trying to do English text, probably not a good idea. Prompt number four tests positioning as things are all over the place. So this is meant to be a red wooden box with a banana inside it, and I'm not sure that is particularly successful. Next to that is meant to be a small yellow plastic ball and a green vase with pretty white flowers and everything on top of an old chessboard style. Some of them have got it, some of them haven't. Which do you think is the best? Prompt number five now, and let's take a look at a couple of people and places. We all know how difficult it is for people to sleep on the grass these days. Generally speaking, hands can still be a bit wonky, even at the best of times. Let's see then how well each of these models generates a photograph of a woman wearing a black jacket and blue jeans who is hugging a grizzly bear. Here are the outputs then, and I think most of those look quite good. There's some rather strange limbs and hands, but overall, which do you think has done the best there? One thing I have noticed is each of those women do look creepily similar, or is that just me? Talking of people looking creepily similar, prompt number six has multiple subjects, but will they all be the same person? No peeking now, what's your guess? There's meant to be a woman who is 42 with long blonde hair, another woman with ginger hair, and a third one with black hair. 
If you guess that everybody looks like they've just come out of a replication device, then you're probably correct. As you can see, I was trying to get different ages and to get each person to look as different as possible. But in some cases, it's just got very confused, like everybody's old and all the hair is the same length. So yeah, how well did they do? That's up to you. Talking about having strange looking limbs for prompt number seven, how well will each model handle things such as a bizarre space alien? This time I want those extra arms. Here are the outputs then, and I think they've all done very well indeed, although my personal favourite is Lumina. Make your own mind up here. For prompt number eight, I'd like to test the impossible. Can I get two different styles in one image? Half the picture has an SVG style, that should have a rabbit eating a carrot, while the other half is an HDR photo, which has a painting in the style of Van Gogh. Ooh. As expected, when we look at the outputs here, we've got the very evident starry night in a number of the images. Now, interestingly enough, you see Lumina has just produced the one, whereas this has cut it into frames. So it's sort of tried to do different images, but everything is indeed still in that same style. As I'm a very curious rodent, prompt number nine wonders how much word placement actually matters. Are some words just more influential than others? That last prompt seemed to indicate the painting style would beat SVG, as SVG was at the start. So if I put painting style at the beginning and SVG at the end, I'd expect painting to still win? The outputs say differently, however. So normally, when you put something towards the beginning of a prompt, that makes it stronger. Here I've got SVG after painting, and well, as you can see, the output is very different. Quite a difficult one this time, so which one does most accurately represent half the picture with a painting style like that of Van Gogh, which shows a rabbit eating a carrot, so hopefully rabbit eating a carrot painting style on the left or the right, while the other half has a flat SVG style gentleman koala. Prompt number 10 explores some unexpected object placements in a drawing style. Will any model be able to get it right? It should be a lovely drawing. We've got the sky and the ground, which should be in obvious places, but we've got a hamster holding a blue umbrella standing next to a red telephone box, which should have a black hat on top of it. How well has each model done? Well, not bad in most cases. This is pretty good, but we just need the hat on top. Here we've got the hat on top, but the umbrella is a bit wonky. So we've got lots of artifacts and strangeness going on there. So score as you feel appropriate. Prompt number 11 is the same thing again, only this time I asked an AI to make it really, really verbose. So we should still have that drawing style and the telephone box and the hamster, but will the length of the prompt make any difference? The outputs here seem to say yes. Certainly in the case of Han Yuan, that has gone very weird indeed. These ones are looking quite cool, although he's got the hat and there's no umbrella. It's, yeah, it's difficult to say, isn't it? For the final prompt, number 12, can it create my portrait with a wonderful moustache, as rodents often have amazing moustaches? As you can see, the answer is, ooh, interesting, Pixar Sigma, yes, definitely. So let's have a quick zoom in. Lumina, very good, but no moustache. Han Yuan, uh, interesting, it's sort of merged moustache with the rest of my face, whereas Pixar Sigma has done very well. Look at that, that's a lovely handlebar moustache, isn't it? Okay, a quick zoom out again. Now here, I covered some of the differences you can expect with basic prompting across those three models, but there are many other things to consider when using any model. Those things are VRAM and of course performance. We've seen a wide range of extras developed for stable diffusion as well, which could almost be considered standard. Those things are LoRa's control nets and IP adapters. They each have their own little perks as well, such as the outpainting like Lumina Compositions and Han Yuan's Dialogue Gen. Performance varies too, with Lumina being the slowest and PixArt being the fastest. I've already covered installs for the other models and Lumina is just as easy. Simply open Comfy UI Manager, click on the custom nodes, put Lumina up in the top and click install and restart as normal. If on the other hand you hate freedom and show you are fully against free and open source software by using Microsoft Windows, then do make sure to take note of any special instructions. 
For improving image quality, you can use an SDXL model with any various extras as a high risk fix or refiner pass, but I just wanted to focus on raw outputs here. If you enjoyed the video and would like to support me on Patreon, you'll also get access to all the workflows I use in my videos, as well as extra information and tips. Hopefully you now have an idea of the types of output each model can generate, so where you go from here is up to you. Of course, I'd suggest watching another Nerdy Rodent video. I like to